camera for PMCs and tripwires. These are just some of the things coming in these patch notes. So we're going to go through these very quickly. We're not going to go through every single one because that would be boring, but we are going to go through the important ones. So straight off the bat, we have factory. We've got a general rework of textures. So I'll keep in most of the original layout. Uh, we're going to be getting some outside areas as well, which is going to be very weird for factory being able to see the sky. This also probably means we're going to get the day night cycle that matches all of the other maps. We've got some new crosswalks in there. There's going to be changes to the upper level of the workshop. Now, I'm not sure if this means the three story office building or whether it's a newer area where the, the pits are and you can climb up on top of there. So we'll have to wait and see. There's also going to be some new quests as a factory, which will be interesting because it's already a bloodbath. So why not add a few more quests in there? Hopefully, these will be quests where you get to sit and look at a wall for 30 seconds and then get shot in the back of the head. Because those are the best quests in the game, as we all know. So we've got a new boss, Partizan, being added. He is friends with Jaeger, which means he's going to be a dick. He uses tripwires and mines. So he hunts down players and scavs with low karma. Now we'll cover karma in just a second, but this seems to be that he's going to set up tripwires, be completely silent, hide in bushes, and just shoot you. So basically, he's going to be the thing that he is hunting. It does also say here he moves very stealthily, which tells me that he may be silent in a similar way to what the cultists are. He does have any guards, but he does use tripwires and he will try and bait you into those tripwires. Okay, Karma. Now, we've been expecting PMC Karma for a while, but it looks like they're implementing it slightly differently to what we were expecting. So, one of the theories originally was going to be that if you shot somebody on the same faction, that doesn't seem to be the case from what we're reading in these patch notes. It seems to be more punishing people who prefer the rat style of gameplay. So, if you camp, stay in the same position or defend the bush for too long, then the chances are you're going to start losing Karma and you get hunted down. Map to map travel. Now this is a new one. It says here there's a new in-game event marathon which is only available to PvP but this doesn't say that the map to map travel will only be available for PvP. So we'll see if PvE players get access to that sooner or later. Now the event marathon will provide a new unique achievement if you complete it and the idea is that you have to make it through all of the maps which have this map to map travel enabled in one raid. Once the event's over transits will be made available to everybody and again this doesn't say whether or not that includes PvE so we may have to wait on the PvE servers until this marathon event has ended on PvP before we get access to to it as well but we will have to wait and see okay tripwires now this one is going to be a fun one we've been waiting for something to improve the ability to randomly murder people from other sides of the map so you know if you if you want to go into a marked room now you got to think to yourself has somebody placed a tripwire nearby you can disarm these if you find them and it does seem like bringing in a multi-tool is actually going to be useful the first time ever you can also shoot them or throw a grenade at them or you can stand on them if you want them to explode uh, but it does also work against scavs by the look of this because it talks about bots in there. And it's important to realise a tripwire is not immediate. It takes as long as the grenade's fuse delay, which makes sense because you're attaching a grenade to a wire. You can pick up disarmed tripwires because the only way of getting these normally is through Jaeger after doing a quest line with him. We're getting bipods and weapon mounting, which will be used by V and Control V. So that will reduce the recoil, reduce the amount of stamina that you use and also increase the accuracy of the weapon by reducing the sway. We're getting the gear rack or the mannequin area, whatever you want to call it. And this just allows your gear to be displayed onto the mannequin as you would see on your PMC. And you can equip gear directly from there or exchange your gear that you already have with that gear. So if you decide you want to run a different map and you want to run a different play style, you can just simply swap it out and use that instead. Thankfully, they've excluded pouch and special slot with this because that's really annoying in the current system. You can't exclude anything. You just have to change everything, which is really painful if you've got a survival kit where you've had one use on it. You don't want to buy a new one. We're also getting the cultist circle. Now, you can put five items in there and it looks like the value of the items is what's critical here. So depending on how much stuff you put in and how much money you're willing to sacrifice, you get a gift back from the cultists. It does say if the value of sacrifice is above a certain threshold, and we don't know what that threshold is, there's a 25% chance chance to receive items needed for active tasks and unfinished hideout zones. This could be really, really good or it could be absolute dog shit because you may just get a set of bolts or you may get a Ledux. Who knows? Now, this does come automatically for free with people with the unheard edition, similar to how people with EOD get the maximized stash straight away. 
They've updated the AI enemy reaction system. This one is really useful for PvE. So having the opportunity for the, uh, for the PMCs in there to not shoot you immediately and maybe shoot some scabs instead would be really, really nice. The choice of whether to be aggressive depends on the mood of the bot, which I find amusing because I just assume that all scabs are miserable fuckers. It's also going to be interesting to see if this changes the way that scabs react to player scabs when you're not at max, max rep with fence. We have a whole load of new weapons, including the Desert Eagle. Now, the Desert Eagle does also bring in some new ammunition with it as well. So now you can press Alt and use your scroll wheel to affect the zoom on all of the scopes listed here. The way we select grenades has changed and the ability on the hotbar, which grenade is coming up next. And you can change it by holding onto G and using the drop down display. And melee has finally been moved to a different key so that whenever I crouch, I don't accidentally get a melee weapon out. The quest setup and long road have both had their objectives simplified. Now these are set up if you don't remember your shotgun quest, which requires you to go into customs and kill, I think it was 15 PMCs if I remember correctly. And long road was like a million scavs on lighthouse, only specifically on the road. Uh, it's good that reducing those as setup quests, especially if you're playing PVP servers, is just a massive pain in the dick and you just have to basically hide in customs and three story dorms, camp there. So yeah, you're gonna get negative karma. So it's a good job that they did reduce that one there's no more class 6 body armor plate carriers or ballistic plates or even helmet modifications available from traders they have to be found in raid we have had a damage increase on what looks like to be the russian calibers and a slight damage reduction on the us 55645 Jumping down to sound improvements, there's various things on here talking about changes to sound and audio and things like that. It doesn't say that the rain will no longer provide you with tinnitus. Fixing incorrect bot spawn points in PvE mode. I'm hoping this means we won't have 50 to 60 bots that we have to fight when going into PvE now. So that was a patch notes 15.0. Let me know in the comments which part of this patch you're most interested in. And if you are interested in moving to PvE, I have five tips on playing PvE mode.